December 26, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Proverbs chapter 26 from the Old Testament. Like snow in summer or rain in harvest, so honor is not fitting for a fool. Like a fluttering bird or like a flying swallow, so a curse without cause does not come to rest. A whip for the horse and a bridle for the donkey and a rod for the backs of fools. Do not answer a fool according to his folly, lest you yourself also be like him. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own estimation. Like cutting off the feet or drinking violence, so is sending a message by the hand of a fool. Like legs that hang limp from the lame, so is a proverb in the mouth of fools. Like tying a stone in a sling, so is giving honor to a fool. Like a thorn that goes into the hand of a drunkard, so is a proverb in the mouth of a fool. Like an archer who wounds at random, so is the one who hires a fool or hires any passerby. Like a dog that returns to its vomit, so a fool repeats his folly. Do you see a man wise in his own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for him. The sluggard says there is a lion in the road, a lion in the streets. Like a door that turns on its hinges, so a sluggard turns on his bed. The sluggard plunges his hand in the dish, he is too lazy to bring it back to his mouth. The sluggard is wiser in his own estimation than seven people who respond with good sense. Like one who grabs a wild dog by the ears, so is the person passing by who becomes furious over a quarrel not his own. Like a madman who shoots firebrands and deadly arrows, so is a person who deceives his neighbor and says, Was I not only joking? Where there is no wood, a fire goes out, and where there is no gossip, contention ceases. Like a charcoal is to burning coals and a wood to fire, so is a contentious person to kindle strife. The words of a gossip are like delicious morsels. They go down into a person's innermost being. Like a coating of glaze over earthenware are fervent lips with an evil heart. The one who hates others disguises it with his lips, but he stores up deceit within him. When he speaks graciously, do not believe him, for there are seven abominations within him. Though his hatred may be concealed by deceit, his evil will be uncovered in the assembly. The one who digs a pit will fall into it. The one who rolls a stone, it will come back on him. A lying tongue hates those crushed by it, and a flattering mouth works ruin. God, in Proverbs, it talks a lot about folly and fools and sluggards and wisdom and the comparison of those. And in chapter 26, we get a couple verses that seem to contradict each other. Do not answer a fool according to his folly, lest you yourself also be like him. And then right after it says, answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own estimation. And many people have comments about these two verses kind of back to back, but personally, I think it's kind of what you showed me the other day. I had a person who posted something uh, and, and we don't have a lot of conversations. He doesn't post on my wall. I haven't posted a lot on his wall, but we know each other from business. And he was talking about Christians being hypocrites and he pulled, <laughs> which we are, everybody is a hypocrite. Um, he pulled out two verses out of the Bible that seemed to uh, prove this hypocrisy with what he was talking about and I thought about the post a lot talk to you about it as you know and, and it kind of goes back to this to not answer him in a foolish way and um, foolish as we know from Proverbs and the rest of the Bible would mean a lot of things uh, do not put him down um, do not um, resort to anger um, because in this case, for the most part, it's not going to be righteous anger. It's still going to be kind of that self-focused, how dare you say that about Christians anger. Um, and we can't argue back with him on the same level because it's, it's not going to make sense. Um, 
and I think this is what these verses are talking about because as soon as I read them and recorded for for daily video Bible I'm like oh that was that situation the other day so he was making a very upfront statement Christians are hypocritical and here's the two verses I have to back it up <laughs> so um, what I wrote was that I would be more than happy to respond to his question slash statement if one he wasn't simply posting this to be controversial because if he's just posting to be controversial he doesn't really care what my answer is um, but if he truly wanted to know I would answer him and as our conversation went on I did answer him and I explained what the passages really were that you couldn't take them out of context which a lot of people do in the Bible a lot of Christians do that too but you can't take them out of context you have to understand the big picture of where those messages came from and then uh, you have to compare the two of them so my ending statement was and yes we're hypocritical <laughs> So I did a couple of things when I taught him about the two verses that he pulled out of context. So I taught him what they really meant. And then I agreed with him. Yep, we are hypocritical, just like all people sin. And then I uh, carried forward with what I hope was wisdom and approval from you, which was an explanation of the redemptive nature of your son, Jesus Christ. The fact that we all sin and through our faith in your grace, God, that that those sins are forgiven. So I had an opportunity to talk about it. So I did answer him in his folly. Um, I did do it, hopefully with enough boundaries that he understood where I was coming from. I wasn't trying to be disrespectful, but I also wasn't going to be silly about it. If he was just posting to be controversial, which he's done before with other topics, then I wasn't going to get involved in the conversation. It wasn't part of it. Um, and then I was able to post information that all of his followers could also see and then go into wisdom which was and you're right christians are hypocrites so is everyone we all sin and what was amazing is afterwards uh, he didn't say a lot which is odd because he always has a lot to say <laughs> but he simply wrote thank you chanel elms i didn't know that a and i know him well enough to know that he wasn't being snotty about it because he would actually make that kind of statement if that's how he felt he was just appreciative so i had uh, answered him as respectfully as i could i had given him the information uh, i had said yes you're actually right and then i had given him additional wisdom on top of it so i, I think as christians especially we have to be really careful and cautious about our answers not diluting down anything that you said, God, but our presentation of it uh, to a, a new believer. How we present it is probably going to be a little bit different than, say, a mature Christian who's still pulling stuff that a new believer does. <laughs> our our uh, conversation with them is going to be completely different. And then completely different if it's a non-Christian, right? The information still has to be true and 100% of what you've told us it is. But the delivery can be different. God, I just pray that I will always stop before responding, either in person or especially online. And, and I would just turn my heart to you and allow you to speak the words that need to be spoken in that time. Sometimes they're pretty black and white words, interestingly enough. Sometimes they're very gentle, grace-filled, mercy-filled words. Uh, it has surprised me sometimes what you've said and what you haven't said at different occasions. But God remind me to be intentional about that to to not be foolish in my answers I have information that can help people understand their relationship with you I also have information for non-believers that can point their way to you which is what you've called me to do to be a disciple that makes disciples God I want to honor you I want to honor you with my life and that includes my thoughts the words I speak, and definitely, very important, the actions that I take. It also involves the words I don't speak and the actions I don't take. Uh, I have to keep that in mind as well. Thank you for the words and the emotions and the processes that you've instilled in my heart. I'm very excited to continue to grow in the knowledge that you want me to have. I pray all this in your son's name. Amen.